In this video, I'll show you how to run Vault Warden privately on your local network on a Synology NAS using Docker Compose. The setup I'll be going over is similar to my previous video where I installed the Caddy web server along with Vault Warden, but instead of using a DuckDNS domain name, we'll be using a Cloudflare domain name, which allows us to make use of a Let's Encrypt certificate in our setup. Also, like the previous video, I created a GitHub repository to streamline the setup process. The repository will need to be cloned to your Synology NAS using Git. Then I'll go through the steps to set everything up through the remainder of the video following the written directions included in the README of the repository. I'll leave a link to the GitHub repository for your reference in the description below. To start off, I'll install some prerequisite packages from the Package Center, so I'll bring it up and first install Docker. Then, when done, I'll search for and install the Git Server package and click Run after it has been installed. In my case, I get this pop-up window because I didn't enable the SSH service, which is a requirement for the Git Server to run, so I'll click OK, which then takes me directly to the terminal and SNMP control panel where I'll enable the SSH service, then click Apply and OK on this pop-up warning window. Now I'm able to run the Git server successfully. Next, I'll SSH into my Synology NAS, cd into the slash volume one slash docker directory, and issue this git clone command to clone the GitHub repo that was set up for this video. I'll then cd into the directory that was just created and create additional subdirectories that are needed for this setup. Next, I'll log into my Cloudflare account and I'll want to create a subdomain that I'll use to access Vault Warden. In my case, I already have a domain that I've set up with Cloudflare that I'll select, which I'm assuming you already have as well. I'll then click on the DNS listing, then the Add Record button to get started creating a new subdomain. For the subdomain setup, I'll leave the type as an A record, enter in the subdomain name I'd like to use under name, enter in the private IP address of the Synology NAS under IPv4 address, toggle the proxy status switch off, then click Save. Next, we'll want to create an API token that will be needed to create and update the Let's Encrypt certificate that will be managed through Cloudflare's DNS. For this, I'll click on My Profile, select the API Tokens listing, then click on the Create Token button. Here, I'll click on Use Template for the Edit Zone DNS API Token template to bring up this Create Token page. I'll then give the token a name. Under Permissions, I'll leave the first entry as is, then click Add More and create a new zone entry that is set to read. Under Zone Resources, I'll point the Include Specific Zone Entry to my Cloudflare domain. Then for TTL, I'll change the end date to a future date to define how long the token will remain active. I chose a date two years into the future, but you can go even further if you want. That's all that's needed, so I'll click Continue to Summary. Then click Create Token to finish up the setup. Now I'll copy the API token that was created, and you should do the same. We'll be using the API token a little later in the video. Note that in the previous video, I had you download the Caddy web server from the caddyserver.com download page, but they've been having issues with downloads hanging or failing, so to simplify the whole process, I've included the Caddy file needed in the GitHub repository that I've created for this video. With everything now in place, I'll switch back to my SSH connection and edit the .env file with the variables that are appropriate for my setup, and you should do the same. In my case, I'll use ports 8080 and 8443 as the HTTP and HTTPS ports that my Synology NAS uses to connect to the Caddy web server. I'll then enter in the subdomain that I've set up with Cloudflare, Enter in an email address I'd like to use for Let's Encrypt communication. 
and enter in the Cloudflare API token that I made note of earlier, then save the changes. Now I should be able to start up the Docker containers using this docker compose command. And after the Vault Warden and Caddy images are pulled and the containers are created, Vault Warden should be up and running. Now I'll bring up Vault Warden in my browser using HTTPS and the custom port number that was set up earlier, along with the Cloudflare subdomain that I've configured. We can see that the Vault Warden instance loads up properly. And now I'm able to create a new account and log in and start making use of my private instance of Vault Warden. To learn more about Vault Warden and for resources I use to create this video, check out the links I've added in the description below. Also, check out my previous videos on Vault Warden listed here on screen. Lastly, if you'd like to support my work, check out the support this channel section in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.